Hey all, Eric Christensen here from meded101.com. Uh, just wanted to uh, review and, and go over opioid equivalents a little bit today. So my background, I have worked as a, a clinical pharmacist in helping to uh, reduce and uh, taper opioids in patients in a uh, responsible way to try to minimize the risk of withdrawal symptoms and things of, of that nature. Um, and the question uh, does occasionally come up about converting patients from one opioid to another. And generally, I'm going to discourage that. And uh, just wanted to, to kind of put this together quick, just a couple of slides to um, demonstrate why I feel that it's important um, that we try to not convert if possible. Now, there may be rare instances uh, situations where um, people have a severe reaction or we need to um, get off of a medication for a particular reason um, right away. And in that situation, if patients are maybe on higher doses or something like that, we may need to um, convert. Uh, but in the overwhelming majority of situations, um, we're normally doing a, a slow taper down and off and keeping uh, those patients on the uh, same medication. So let's get into um, why I don't feel like converting from one opioid to the other um, should be done if we can avoid it and uh, give you a little background on that. So if you go look online, you can search anywhere and, and find approximate uh, opioid equivalencies. And I just put down a, a few that um, I commonly see used in practice. So morphine definitely see used. That's kind of the gold standard that we compare everything to as far as morphine equivalents go. And so we've got 30 milligram dose approximately equivalent to oxycodone 20 milligram dose. So what that means is if it takes less of a drug to provide the same effect, that means that that drug is more potent. So it takes less oxycodone to get the same effect as morphine at a higher dose. So oxycodone is therefore more potent. So just an important um, term to, to remember there. Uh, hydrocodone, approximately 30 milligrams. Uh, fentanyl patch um, approximately provides 30 milligrams of, of oral morphine per day. So a 12.5 microgram patch is considered an approximate equivalency there. Uh, hydrocodone, 7.5, and uh, codeine, of course, 200 milligrams. So codeine on the scale of, of potency is obviously the least potent uh, opioid here. Now, why do I virtually never recommend or only in really, really rare circumstances recommend converting from one opioid to another. Um, it really is truly due to um, genetics and, and what we're learning um, in genetic variations. So some patients may be rapid metabolizers of drugs. They may be slow metabolizers of drugs. And we have all these different enzymes within the body that break down these medications. So an example, uh, CYP2D6 is a very, very common example of a, an enzyme within the body that breaks down medications. So in the situation of oxycodone, that is one of the possible pathways that the drug may be deactivated. So if you've got a patient that's a rapid metabolizer through CYP, 3A4 and 2D6, that's going to bring down the concentrations of oxycodone or the activity of oxycodone more quickly. It may blunt a patient's response if they're a rapid metabolizer at those enzymes. Now you take that compared to morphine, if we've got different pathways and patients have different genetics, which they often do, um, we could lead to, it could lead to a situation where we have different responses 
to these medications, even though they are considered uh, to be approximately equivalent dosages. Uh, the other uh, classic example, um, I talked about 2D6 a little bit. Uh, codeine is actually what they call a prodrug. So that gets converted to morphine in the body. And 2D6 is an important enzymatic pathway that actually converts that drug to a more active opioid form. So in situations where we've got a slow metabolizer that could lead to less activity of codeine in that formation of an active metabolite. And a patient may not respond in um, analgesic, you know, pain relief, that type of thing. They may not respond as well to codeine as, let's say, a patient who may be a rapid metabolizer. So I think that really provides you, hopefully, a quick a high-level overview of why converting patients uh, to different opioids can present a, a risk and a challenge and we can easily run into withdrawal symptoms and or we could run into uh, toxicity symptoms of uh, opioid overdose like respiratory depression and things like that if we don't get our conversion correct and or if there are genetic variations that may be at play. So a uh, quick overview there. Again, meded101.com slash blog is a, a great source of information where I release uh, new content, educational content for pharmacists, nurses, and uh, med students and healthcare professionals alike. So meded101.com slash blog for more info. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to leave a, a comment or a review below. Uh, if you feel it was uh, helpful in any way. So take care. Thanks for listening and have a great day.